Um, when you go like, I've been I was here for at this point at that point for five years. Um, you kind of sometimes you go through that point in your life, but when you leave and come back, sometimes you realize how special a place is and how really special your teammates are when you when you do something like that. You talk to other coaches, you talk to other places, and you realize that that's hard to find an ideal and a culture like we have here. Even though like like everybody's going to bring up last season, one is exactly what you want in a season, especially at a power five level any or anywhere for that matter. Um, you realize how close the team sticks together and how how much you grow in times of adversity. Uh, I talk I talk to a lot of the coaching staff throughout throughout that process. Uh, Coach Manilak called me pretty much every day, um, trying just talking to me about what's going on. Is there any chance to, that I could come back? And uh, really feeling that love from not just Coach Manilak but the rest of the coaching staff that did reach out to me. Um, really makes you makes you well known how much you enjoy a place and how much of an impact that it's that I think I'd, I'd like to think that I made here and that they've made on me throughout the years. Um, I think it was happy on both accounts. Uh, I think both of us were ecstatic that I made a decision. I personally, I hated that process um, while I was going through it in high school. Um, for lack of a better term, I don't like people blowing smoke, and uh, that's a lot of the uh, a lot. <laughs> sorry, that's a, that, as many people know. That's a lot of the coaching, or not the coaching, the recruiting aspect of things is telling you what you want to hear. I don't like that. What was more difficult, your decision to return or talking through that noise and answering that question? I'm just joking. I don't know. That, that was pretty tough. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, what, was it awkward at all? Like, you know, having to return? Like, you, you, tell, you tell everyone, hey, I'm gone. Like, I'm going mm -hmm. into the portal. Mm -hmm. And you continue those conversations. But was it awkward for you to say, like, hey, like, I know you might have started planning to fill my spot, but, like, I want to come back. Is it awkward on your end at all? Are you talking? Are you referring to the, from the coaching staff perspective for, for or from just, the, yeah, from your the interaction, like letting them know, like, hey, I might come back? Was that awkward um, for you at all? From the from the coaching staff perspective, it was. I had the feeling they always wanted me to come back regardless. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't like I like. I'm trying to think of a way to phrase this, but it wasn't as it wasn't as if I didn't have any other place to go. I don't want you to. Think that it was more. It was more. This is my. This is my home. Right. Like at the end of the day, this is this is the home that I didn't necessarily want to leave at the time. I felt as though like it was time to kind of step out. But realizing that this is home. This is where I belong. These are the people that I've come to call family throughout the years that I couldn't imagine the day without right now. Like it's hard to it's hard to leave something like that fully behind, especially when like coaches come to see your families. Like they come to see, they see, they know, they know everybody on first name basis. They ask you how your mom's doing, how your dad's doing, how your how your grandparents are doing. They know everything about you at this point. So that that is family, especially when they care about you so much. What do you guys have to do to get back to playing your style of defense compared to how you guys have been when you've been here? But they've been, you guys have been a lot better. Uh, I think we just need to get that edge back, which is something I think that we've strived for over the past two days of spring practice. You can feel it and see it in the air already. As far as how we attack the how we attack the football, how we pursue the ball, how we're striving to make little little changes on defense to make sure that we get back to how we once were in 2021, 2022. Last year was a hiccup. I don't want people to think that that's who we are as a football team because it's not. At the end of the day, we are a smash mouth, blue collar football team that's going to try and knock your teeth out your back end. So that's how that's how we approaching this, this spring ball, getting back to what we're doing, how we've done it in the past, and who we really are. Yeah, absolutely. I think, like I said, the, the mentality we have here is not a three-win football team. The mentality we have here is we're going to walk out and dominate every play, every snap, every second of a football game and let you know that you're playing the Pitt Panthers. And that's the ideal that we've set forth in the past. You look in the back, one of our four pillars is toughness. That's something that we maybe lapsed on a little bit last year, but that's no more. We're a tough football team. We're going to show people how tough we are in the coming games. Um, the young linebackers like Braylon, Jordan, and Machine develop over the course of last offseason throughout the entire season? Oh, they've 
developed like nothing I've ever seen from a from a young crew that's they're very professional they're very they're very much in tune with their craft they're here they're here late they're here early they're here studying film they're here trying to get their bodies right recovering doing everything like a professional would alongside of doing classes because again we are student athletes so at the end of the day they're doing everything like a professional like they're here year four or five they're doing things like you should and they're coming along great the leaps and strides from Monday to today is outstanding. The little details that they've improved upon in two days that we've all improved upon in two days is out outstanding. You can tell the attention to details there, just like an old guy. I, I know it's early, but are you kind of running the show from that line, line Um, I wouldn't say running the show because I'd say it's more of a collective. Like as far like you, if you guys are out of practice, you see Braylon running the two mic. Braylon's really step, stepping foot into that role. Uh, showing who he is. You're getting young guys like Jeremiah and Marcelin who are starting to come around, understand what's going on. We're running, we're running things like we should run things. It's everybody's held account, holding everybody else accountable, and they're accepting accountability for mistakes. That's what we, that's what we need to do to continue on going forward to make sure that we are a better football team. To circle back about what you said about how the assistants, and they know your family and everything. I mean, you've been around in college football through all these changes. Right, and it is, it is a lot harder to get to know everyone's family now as a coach because of the roster turnover year by year. What does that say about your coaching staff that despite so many coming and going guys, you know, with the portal and everything, mm -hmm. that they still make that effort to, to know every single guy here on a personal level? At the end of the day, a coach is not just, he's not just a coach. He's a father figure, he's a member of your family. He's, he's someone to guide you instead of some of your family that isn't here with you at the moment. So that being said, that at the end of the day, that will never change. Like, you can say NIL changes this, NIL, NIL changes that. We come here to play football. If you come, if you come, some, if you go someplace just to sign a check or get a check, you're not doing it for the right reasons. You're doing it for what football can do for you, not for what you can do for football, not be for the love of the game. And I think that's what a lot of, co a lot of the coaching staff here really instills in a lot of us is at the end of the day, like, you can say, I want to do this for the money, but then you ain't going to be doing it for the money long. This is just, this is, this is where you're at right now. You have to be where your feet are. You got to love the game. You got to approach it with that love or else you're never going to get better. That's one, that's what the coaching staff instills in us. That's why they're the, one of the best coaching staffs in the land. Do you see how these new things in the game have kind of made their jobs harder? And with that observation, you also recognize their extra effort to continue you know, preaching the yeah. same message. Yeah, I can see it's it's definitely added a, another layer, I guess you could say, um, because it just it is what it is. It's the name of the game. It's how the game is transformed over since I since I've been in school. Heck, when I started, you couldn't you couldn't do that. You got in trouble. People were passing it out in Arby's bags, other places. But <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, like it just adds another facet, another thing they have to deal with, which I think they've done a phenomenal job. As you've looked at the kids that we bring in, we don't bring in just kids of that are good football players. We bring in kids of character, kids that belong here and want to be here, not just aren't, that aren't just here for a check. Anything else for Brandon? So, like, you guys have practiced against, you know, getting ready for Tennessee or other tempo teams. Mm -hmm. like, that's the offense you play against every day. What's that like for a defense? It's definitely a little bit interesting. Most of the time, uh, we don't see tempo until later on in the season, like, We've had an offense in the past couple of years that's run a lot of 12 and 13 personnel, real slow, huddle it up. That's no more. Coach Bell has done an awesome job bringing it in, teaching guys, teaching guys signals where we haven't had, where our offensive guys haven't really had to learn signals before, and they're definitely going at a, a fast tempo. So for the defense, it's we've seen we've seen it before, but we haven't seen it this early. So I think it's really it's really helping us out, helping us make sure our eyes are disciplined, making sure we know our assignment through in and out, making sure we know everything that goes on throughout the game, not just your job. So seeing that coming forth at this early in the game, practice one of spring ball and practice two, seeing the growth that they've made is phenomenal. I think it's going to be one heck of a show. Brandon, what do you say about uh, Key Thompson as a veteran guy like yourself? What's your relationship like? Key Thompson's definitely shown, a, definitely shown a lot of maturity, especially being around us right now. He's fit, he's fit in. He hasn't, he hasn't, sometimes guys come in, they don't really know how to maneuver, I guess, because especially being an older guy, you're so used to a different system. But Key has done a wonderful job of kind of melding in, learning, asking questions, acting like a professional, doing everything he needs to do to make sure he's, re he's ready when his number's called, making sure he's doing everything he needs to do so we can attack the day, make sure we're all good for this coming season. Thank you, Brett.
Thank you guys.